So we're now going to look at the cellular uh, immune response. And here, this involves T cells. The T cells are going to provide defense against intracellular uh, antigens. An example here is cells infected with a virus or a bacteria, or cancerous or abnormal cells, or foreign transplanted uh, cells in the case of uh, organ transplant. Uh, some T cells uh, directly kill cells. Others release chemicals that regulate immune response. Uh, T cells are more complex than B cells, both in classification and in function. There are two populations of T cells, and they're based. Uh, these populations are based on the uh, differentiation that occurs in the glycoprotein uh, receptors that are displayed on their surface. Okay, so there is going to be two kinds. There's going to be the CD4, which we're going to look at first, and then the CD8. So the CD4 here uh, usually are going to become T, uh, helper T cells, which will symbolize as TH. And these helper T cells can activate B cells, other T cells, and macrophages. They also uh, direct adaptive immune response. Some are going to become regulatory T cells, which moderate uh, the immune response. And some of them are going to become memory cells. So this is illustrated here. So we start up here. Uh, with a lymphocyte. Lymphocyte migrates uh, to the thymus where maturation occurs, something we covered earlier. And this is going to be the one that uh, produces the CD4 uh, receptors. And then that CD4, uh, when it leaves the thymus, it's a nave, uh, nave cell until it interacts with an antigen. In this case, we have an antigen presenting cell, like a dendritic cell, uh, interacts with and activates uh, this nave uh, t-cell and so this t-cell then goes through differentiation uh, and it will become either a uh, helper t-cell or a regulatory cell as it multiplies uh, so these would be considered the effectors and then some are going to become a memory cells and then we have the cd8 which is uh, the other kind of receptor and so uh, that's right here on the diagram, and this is the CD8 receptor right there. Uh, these are going to become cytotoxic uh, T cells or TC uh, symbolized, and these are capable of destroying cells harboring foreign antigens, and some also become memory T cells as well. Uh, so you can see the same process here. Uh, the T cell here with the CD8 receptor leaves the thymus, it's still nave, and then it uh, encounters an antigen. And here you have another antigen presenting cell. And when the antigen is presented at the receptor there, then that activates the cell. And the cell differentiates and multiplies. Uh, some are going to become memory cells. And then some are going to become the effectors, which are the cytotoxic T cells down here. So helper cytotoxic and regulatory T cells are uh, considered activated T cells, and they become activated after they encounter the antigen once they leave the thymus. Uh, the nave T cells, uh, when they leave the thymus, are simply referred to as CD4 and CD8 cells. So this is that same diagram shown all together. To the left, we saw uh, the production of CD4 type and then the CD8 uh, nave cells and their activations. So now we're going to look at the major histocompatibility proteins and the presentation of the antigen itself, which is something we saw uh, right over here on the earlier diagrams, um, right here at this level, right here. And so this does in, uh, involve a uh, major histocompatibility proteins, and there's two classes of them. So. T cells are going to be are going to respond the, the, or activated uh, to process fragments of antigens displayed on the surface of cells by uh, MHC protein. So the T cells are only going to be responding to fragments of antigens. Uh, the antigen presentation is vital for activation of the nave T cells, which we saw already, and the normal functioning of the effectors. So these T cells uh, must be 
uh, activated and it involves uh, both MHC proteins and uh, the presentation of antigens. So there's going to be two classes of these major histocompatibility proteins. There is the class 1 MHC proteins and these are uh, the class ones are going to be displayed on all of your body cells with the exception of the red blood cells. Those will not have that. And then there's the class 2 uh, MHC proteins and those are displayed by antigen presenting uh, cells like dendritic cells, macrophages and even B cells. Uh, both types are synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum and bind and bind to peptide fragments. For the class 1 MHC proteins, they're going to bind with short fragments, uh, 8 to 9 amino acids of an endogenous antigen, which is a protein synthesized inside the cell. Uh, endogenous antigens can be self antigens, which are normal uh, proteins of the cell, or non self antigens, which are abnormal proteins found in infected or abnormal cells. So, in the case of an infected, say infected by a virus or uh, some uh, mutations have occurred that have created an abnormal cell, then those would be abnormal proteins, but they are endogenous. So, they uh, are originating from within. So, the class 1 uh, MHC are crucial. Uh, for CD8 cell, uh, cell activation. So the class 1's uh, MHCs interact with the CD8 uh, nave T cells. So here the class 1 MHC uh, act as antigen binding holders. Uh, they form a self, the self part of the T cells or the self part that the T cells recognize. Okay. Uh, they also inform cytoxic T cells of microorganisms hiding in cells. The cytoxic T cells ignore displayed self antigens. And then we have the class two uh, MHC proteins. These are going to bind with longer fragments, in this case, 14 to 17 amino acids. And this is going to be of exogenous, which means they originate outside the cell, extracellular antigens that have been engulfed and broken down uh, by a phagolysosome and then by the antigen pre presenting cell. So the antigen presenting cell phagocytizes some exogenous antigen and then breaks it down and then presents fragments that are 14 to 17 amino acids in size. Uh, the class 2 MHC proteins uh, are going to be recognized by T helper or helper T cells and they signal CD4 cells uh, that help is required. So this table summarizes both the uh, class 1 MHC and the class 2 MHC in here. Uh, these are going to, this shows uh, in the first row, this compares the difference between the two. So all of your nucleated cells, remember red blood cells are not nucleated, so red blood cells will not have uh, this type of uh, class 1 MHC, but the uh, antigen presenting cells like dendritic cells, macrophages, and B cells will have the class 2 uh, MHC. Uh, then what are they recognized by? Uh, in this case, the class 1 are recognized by NAVE uh, CD8 cells and by cytoxic T cells, which are already active T cells. And for the class 2 MHC, uh, the NAVE CD4 cells and also helper T cells uh, are going to recognize uh, the class 2 MHC. Uh, so here now foreign antigens on the MHC are, uh, in this case, uh, would be endogenous. So this would be uh, an intracellular pathogen or a protein made by, for example, a mutated cell that's gone cancerous. So for the class 1, this is endogenous um, uh, antigens. And then for the class two, this is exogenous. These were things that I just mentioned on the prior, prior slide. So uh, now we're gonna look here at the cells displaying these foreign antigens on the MHC. And this is the message that they sent. So uh, with regards to class one MHC, if the cell is an, an, is an antigen presenting cell, it's gonna be signaling a message uh, like this. It says, I belong to self, but have captured a foreign uh, a foreign invader, and this is what looks what it looks like, and then kill any cell that displays it. If the cell is not an APC, 
then it's going to be signaling I belong to self but have been invaded or have become cancerous and then it says it's basically signaling to kill that self. For the class 2, for comparison, the signal being sent would be I belong to self but I have captured a foreign invader uh, and this is what it looks like. Help me mount a defense against it. So there is uh, a uh, a sort of uh, a restriction here. Uh, so MHC restriction here. And here the CD4 and the CD8 cells uh, are going to have different requirements uh, for MHC protein that presents antigens to them. For the CD4s that become helper cells, uh, the CD4 that become T helper cell, helper T cells, they are restricted to binding to only class 2. This is something we've already seen. Uh, so if we look back uh, to even just the prior slide here and we look uh, right there is your CD4 and it's class 2 uh, MHC proteins and these are typically going to be located on the surface of antigen presenting uh, cells. For the CD8 cells uh, that become cytoxic T cells they're restricted to binding only to class 1 MHC proteins and those are found on every uh, cell surface even including the uh, antigen presenting cells. Once activated, cytoxic T cells seek out the same antigen on the class 1 proteins on any cell that has it. Uh, the dilemma here then for the antigen presenting cells is how to enable CD8 cells uh, to be activated by non-endogenous phagocytized proteins. So here the dendritic cells get around this uh, problem by engulfing a dying virus infected or uh, infected cell or tumor cells and then they display the engulfed endogenous proteins uh, on both class 1 and class 2 MHCs. So basically they break down uh, uh, the proteins associated with the virus or a, a tumor cancerous cell and they break it down and then they display uh, those antigens uh, at the surface on those MHCs uh, uh, at the surface of the cell. Uh, the dendrites can also import antigens via temporary gap junctions with infected cells. Uh, so here the, the dendritic cells don't have to actually phagocytize but instead can just uh, take in uh, some antigens from an infected cell rather than phagocytize it. Uh, so now we're going to look at a little bit more detail regarding the activation and the differentiation of cells. So this is something we saw very early uh, on an earlier slide uh, where we were activating the, the NAVE T cells. So there's a bit more detail on how they're activated. Uh, so the T cells can be activated only when the antigen is presented to them. And this is going to be a two-step process. First is the antigen binding and then there is co-stimulation. We're going to look at both of those. And both of these occur uh, on the surface of the same antigen presenting cell. And both are required for clonal selection of the T cells. So if you don't get both of these, uh, antigen binding and co-stimulation, then the T cell will not be activated uh, to proliferate and differentiate into the specific cell types. So we're going to look at the first one. This is the antigen binding uh, right here. And the T cell antigen uh, receptors or TCRs are going to bind to the antigen uh, MHC complex on the APC surface. So we'll see an image of what that looks like right now. So the T cell receptors must perform a double recognition by recognizing both the MHC and the foreign antigen. So basically, uh, what has the double recognition is recognizing both the self part of you uh, or part of your cells as well as the non-self, the foreign antigen. Uh, the binding of, of the uh, T-cell receptor to the complex is going to uh, trigger multiple intracellular pathways that start the T-cell activation. So it's at this point here that these uh, T-cells will become activated. Uh, other T-cell surface proteins are involved in this T-cell activation. For example, CD4 and CD8 are going to help maintain coupling during uh, the antigen recognition. And then we have post-stimulation. So uh, to complete the T-cell activation, uh, this requires the T-cell to also bind to one or more 
uh, co-stimulatory signals which are located on the surface of the antigen presenting cell. So the cell that's presenting the antigen uh, is also going to have another uh, uh, signaling molecule that is going to uh, work as a co-stimulant uh, to activate the cell. Uh, if this co-stimulant is not present, then uh, energy occurs, and this is uh, and this what is energy for the T cells. Uh, the T cells going to become tolerant of the antigen, so the T cell then wouldn't recognize the antigen as something that it needs to act against. Uh, and so uh, the T cells then do not uh, become activated, they do not uh, divide or proliferate, and they're not going to secrete any s signals that are going to signal uh, other aspects. And these uh, signal molecules are cytokines. Uh, so this two-step uh, process is a safeguard against unwanted T cell activation. So in cases where we don't want those T cells to become activated, this is kind of a double check on that process. Now we look at the uh, proliferation and differentiation of these T cells once they're activated. Uh, the T cells are activated. Uh, once they're activated, they're going to enlarge and then divide or proliferate. Uh, and this is going to be in response to the cytokines. So one of the things the cytokines do is encourage proliferation of the cells. Uh, differenti uh, so these uh, dividing cells pro uh, proliferate. Uh, and then they differentiate and perform the functions according to their uh, T cell class. So uh, if it's a helper T cell, then it performs the functions of the helper T cell. Uh, this primary T cell response just described uh, is going to peak within a week. So it can take up to a week for uh, the peak response to occur. Um, for the T cells, though, uh, once they're activated, they are going to go through apoptosis after a period of between 7 and 30 days. Uh, we don't want these T cells uh, continuously active uh, because that uh, can be uh, problematic. It, it can be a hazard because they're going to produce large amounts of inflammatory cytokines, uh, those chemical messengers we mentioned about. And one of the things those cytokines do is encourage uh, cell proliferation. Uh, and when cells are dividing uh, rapidly, that's referred to as hyperplasia. And rapidly dividing cells that go out of control uh, would become uh, cancerous. Uh, so uh, this can occur if we don't clear out those T cells uh, by programming their death, which is called apoptosis. Uh, the memory T cells, though, will remain and mediate a secondary response uh, should those antigens be presented again. Uh, so this is figure 2117, which shows uh, clonal selection of T cells. And this involves simultaneous recognition of self and non-self. In step one, we have the antigen presentation. And here we have a dendritic cell right here. Uh, engulfs an exogenous antigen, processes it, and displays its fragment, fragments on the class 2 MHC protein. So right here you see the bacteria being ingested, and then it gets digested, and then fragments of this foreign antigen or exogenous antigen gets presented on the class 2 MHC protein. In the second part, we're going to have double recognition uh, right here. And here the CD4 T cell is going to recognize the antigen MHC complex, which is right over here. And uh, here both the T cell receptor and CD4 proteins are going to bind to the antigen MHC complex. So that's occurring right there uh, where the binding is occurring um, between those molecules, the CD4 protein and uh, this uh, uh, T cell receptor. And then you're going to have the co-stimulation there. Uh, or a stimulatory molecule that's also going to bind to a receptor and that co-stimulatory molecule was right there. That's that uh, brown uh, in this diagram. That brown line right there is also binding to a receptor on the surface of the T cell. And so what that's going to do is it's going to uh, cause the activation of the, of the nave T cell. And so it goes through clone formation uh, here. And so the activated CD4 T cell is going to proliferate or clone 
and become uh, uh, memory cell, memory T cells, as well as some kind of effector cells, uh, like helper T cells in this case. Uh, so looking at the cytokines uh, mentioned earlier, for the cytokines, uh, these are chemical messengers of the immune system. Uh, they help regulate or mediate cell development, uh, differentiation, and uh, responses in the immune system. Uh, they include interferons, which we've mentioned earlier uh, in the chapter, as well as interleukins. Uh, and so here is uh, one interleukin. It's interleukin-1, or IL-1. This one's going to be released by macrophages, and this stimulates T cells. So it's going to stimulate the T cells to release another interleukin called interleukin-2, and that's going to help synthesize more interleukin-2 receptors uh, on the cell surfaces, on, on uh, T cell surfaces. Uh, the interleukin-2 is a key growth factor um, acting on the same cells that release it, so release it and then interact with this messenger itself, or it will act on other neighboring T cells uh, in the area. And this is going to encourage the activated T cells uh, to divide rapidly. Uh, other cytokines uh, are going to amplify and regulate uh, innate and adaptive responses. An example here would be a uh, gamma interferon, which uh, enhances the killing power of macrophages, which is uh, an innate response. Here's a table summarizing some of the cytokines. Some of them we've already mentioned either earlier in the chapter or just now. We have the interferons. Uh, we have the alpha and beta interferons. And we saw that earlier. These are secreted by many cells and they have antiviral effects, uh, helping to reduce the production of uh, viruses in the cell. They also can activate natural killer cells. And then we have gamma interferon. This is secreted by lymphocytes and uh, this activates macrophages. This stimulates the synthesis and expression of more class one and class two MHC proteins and promotes differentiation of helper T cells into helper uh, T, uh, cell, helper T1 cells. And then we have interleukins, and there's several described. The ones we've mentioned uh, so far are interleukin-1 and interleukin-2. The interleukin-1 is secreted by macrophages, and this is going to do some things like promoting inflammation, uh, T cell activation. It also causes fever as it acts as a pyrogen uh, that resets the thermostat in your hypothalamus. And then interleukin-2, which is secreted by helper T cells, and this stimulates can stimulate T cells and B cell proliferation, uh, uh, regulatory T cells uh, development, and uh, natural killer uh, cell activation. There are other interleukins that you should uh, just glance over and just be familiar with the fact that there are other interleukins, but they weren't specifically mentioned uh, in these uh, notes on this presentation.